winter months, many of us cyclists turn to training indoors to avoid all the cold weather. Or for us time crunch cyclists, it's great to be able to jump on the turbo and do a quick workout. Now having the luxury of being able to ride indoors is great, but is it great for your bike? I mean, most of us probably haven't even considered that. So coming up are some tips to make sure you can avoid destroying your bike on the indoor trainer. All right, man, I'm just gonna, um, just gonna get my bike out of the way here for you. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? I'm just gonna drag my bike out of the You're way. You're gonna do it like that, Alex? Yeah. Are you serious? That's the number one thing that will destroy your bike on the trainer. These trainers are like 30 kilograms. They're heavy ones. What, I can't just drag it along? No, your rear, rear part of the bike is not designed to drag 30 kilos. Oh, okay. I actually know someone who did that and cracked their frame. So learn from that lesson. What do I do? Play it safe. Hmm. Take the bike off, move them separately. Oh. That is your pride and joy. All right, yeah, Imagine thanks. if anything happened to that. <sighs> What, where are you going with it? Oh, you said I've got to move it, yeah, take it apart. Actually, where are you actually moving it? Oh, just over here. So next up, just because we're riding indoors doesn't mean you can neglect looking after your drivetrain. Even so, it's still important to give your chain a clean every once in a while. You can either remove your bike from the trainer, head outside, clean your chain using your normal methods, and then you can clean the cassette which is on the trainer itself. But if you don't want to have to take your bike outdoors, you can use a chain cleaning device such as this. You simply put some degreaser in at the top, clamp it around the chain, pedal the chain all the way around, and then all the old grease and grime will be captured inside here, keeping the inside of your house nice and clean. Once you have got a clean chain, you can simply apply your normal chain loop onto your chain in your usual manner. Although if you are planning on only riding indoors for a while, you could probably use just a dry chain loop. Do the job perfectly. This one is probably the main culprit for destroying your bike on the indoor trainer. If you're doing indoor training correctly, you will sweat a lot. And all that sweat is just going to drip off right onto your headset and all the important parts of your bike and basically corrode it. And all that sweat is also going to soak into your handlebars, get all grim and stinky. So if you are doing a lot of indoor training, you might want to think about changing your bar tape a little more often. Because if you think about it, your hands are resting on this bar tape a lot and you're touching your face and lots of other things, or getting off your bike and doing things and you want it to be hygienic and not sweaty, stinky and disgusting. You can also get specifically designed sweat covers for your bike as well that will basically go over the whole top of your bike and protect it from all that sweat. But don't worry if you don't have one of them, a towel will work just as well. But remember, when you are done with that towel after your sweaty session, do not leave it on your bike. The towel will be wet and sweaty and if you just leave it on your handlebars or on your stem, it's just going to soak all that sweat into the bike. So take it off, whack it in the wash and wash it. Something else that could be destroying your bike is either over tightening or under tightening where the rear axle mounts onto the train. And Manon has said in the past she's seen people that haven't tightened it up enough and then when they've done a sprint the bike has just flown off of the trainer. And then on the other hand if you over tighten it you're putting undue stress not only on the trainer but also through the bike itself. Now with a quick release system it's fairly easy you just tighten it up just the same as you would when you're fitting your wheel into the bike. Now if you have a disc brake bike with a through axle it's important to tighten it up just as you would with your normal wheel but if you're unsure of how tight to do it you could always just use a torque wrench to make sure you get it set up correctly. Normally between about seven to eight newton meters. Now this torque wrench is called the TW 5.2. Ah, what a unique name. And if you've just got yourself a new indoor trainer and need to set it up for the first time, you'll probably find that inside the box you've got a selection of different through axles, adapters and spacers. And it's important to make sure you use the correct setup of spacers and axles for your bike, not only with regard to the spacing of the rear hub, because if you don't have it set up correctly, you're going to put undue stress through the frame either by squishing it into a smaller size than it needs to be or having to stretch the frame to fit it over your trainer. 
And when it comes to setting up your bike that uses a through axle system, it's important to not only use the correct diameter and length of through axle, but also to make sure the thread on the end of that through axle is the correct one for your bike. This is in regard to the pitch of the threads, because if you don't use the correct one, well, you could make quite a mess of your bike. Show your tyres some love too. Depending on how long you plan on having your bike set up on the indoor trainer, you might want to consider some of these things. I know that some people will set their bike up on the indoor trainer for all winter long and they'll be sat there for months. Make sure to keep your tyres inflated, so top them up every now and again, and rotate your wheels as well because this is especially important if you have sealant in your tyres because if they're just in one static position they'll all sink to the bottom and we don't really want that. If you are using a classic trainer then you might want to think about getting specific turbo tyres. These tend to be a lot more durable and thicker. Say if you used your road tyres on it you'll end up wearing them down really quickly, thinning them out and essentially destroying your nice road tyres. So it's definitely worth the investment because otherwise you're just going to end up spending a load of money on tyres. So I hope some of these tips have helped you avoid destroying your bike on the indoor trainer. Let us know in the comments section down below if you have any tips or tricks of your own to help keep your bike safe on the trainer. And whilst you're down there, why don't you let us know what has been your biggest disaster whilst training indoors? What's yours been, Alex? Um, I've not really had any other than just giving up quite early. Yeah, mm. same. Mm. See ya.